Hey everyone, Paul here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to use the Cryptomat to create some really cool comic style effects. Some of you may have used the Cryptomat before uh, for compositing purposes, and some of you may be wondering what this Cryptomat thing is. Don't worry, I'm going to be taking you through the very simple steps to set it up before we jump in and create some really cool comic style effects. So without any further ado, why don't we jump into Blender and get started. So what we've got up on a screen is what you generally see when you generate and apply the Cryptomat uh, node in your compositor, but it's not that simple. Now you see, generating mats um, is something that I tackled a little while ago. And uh, basically what we wanna do is we wanna take features of the alpha that sort of cut out bits of the scene from other bits of the scene. And in the past, we could do that using a material or an object index. Uh, so here you'd see the entire alpha of this particular object. Uh, but if we were to run it through an ID mask node, um, I've already assigned these objects in this scene um, ID masks. I'm gonna click on that alpha. Uh, assigned it to zero is just the background. One, you can see that this particular object has been assigned a object index of one, and this particular object has been assigned an object index of two. And so you can see very quickly how this could be very powerful in separating one object from another in the compositor uh, using some kind of, of, of mat that's generated from object data. Now what the cryptomat does is it allows you to generate object data based on these three passes, objects, materials, and assets, which I'll get to at the end of this tutorial. Uh, you can assign a number of levels for those passes so that uh, if you have higher levels and you've got you know, a fairly large scene and you need some pixel level <laughs> differentiation, you probably wanna bump up those levels. But for the purposes of this particular tutorial, I've dropped those levels down to its minimum two uh, so that we've got very little information to work with. I've also enabled all three passes so that we can see what the difference between them are. Now, the uh, scene that I've got is this particular scene that I used for the quick tip tutorial, and you'll notice a couple of things. Okay, obviously we've got a lot of objects. Okay, we've got uh, building parts and streets and uh, all sorts of stuff. We've also got a number of materials assigned here. So if we were to take a look at the material preview, you can see that we've got this gray of the cement. We've got this sort of reflective windows. We've got this darker gray for the street lamps and this sort of glowy material for the street light. And we've even got a couple of uh, materials assigned to these roads. Okay, so we've got some materials to play with as well. Now, further to that, I've also got these three empties that I have assigned background parent, mid-ground parent, and foreground parent. And you'll notice that a bunch of these objects are all parented to each of these empties. And these will become more apparent as to why I've done this when we're looking at assets under your Cryptomat settings. Now, in order to enable the Cryptomat, you do need to be in cycles in our view layer properties, go down to passes and under a uh, light where you can see that I've uh, assigned a uh, diffuse color, glossy color, emission and shadow, we've got cryptomat. And by enabling all of these, okay, we can get information based on object, based on material and based on asset. Now you can do one or all of them. I've just enabled all of them so that I can do this demonstration for you. Uh, so without any further ado, why don't we jump into the render and see how all of this works. So I've just enabled my backdrop uh, over my um, compositing nodes so that we can sort of see what's going on in the background as we work. Now, if I just disable the backdrop here, you can see just the node structures. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna consolidate all of these into a group and just tuck them away so we can still use our render. Then we can really focus on the cryptomat outputs from our color total pass. And so I'm just going to box select all of these nodes here. I'm going to go control G. Okay. And tab out of that group. And now this node group here, oh, maybe we don't need the compositor there. This node group here, we can call color pass. Okay. And we can collapse that down. 
Maybe we can even collapse down the line work uh, over here as well. So with all of that tucked away and grouped, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a CryptoMat node. Yes, you can't just uh, have these uh, uh, crypto objects uh, and sort of these CryptoMat passes available. Uh, you need actually a node to run them through so that you can pick out various information. So we're going to go to Shift A, Mat, CryptoMat, and there it is. And you'll instantly notice that we've got four inputs, image, crypto one, uh, zero, one, and two. We don't need the one and two because we've only got one for each of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit N and under item, I'm going to remove a couple of those crypto layers. Then hit N again to tuck away that option. Uh, and now what we wanna do is bring in our image into the image slot and our CryptoMat object into our crypto slot Let's uh, just bring in our background here so we can see what's going on. You'll see that there is no image because nothing has been added to the mat. Also, if we connect mat, it's black because nothing has been added to the mat. But if we click on, if we connect pick, then we get this, which looks a lot more familiar. Okay, so we've got all of these objects that we can pick. I don't really like working like this. I've got to do it just for basically the, the video purpose. So what I'm going to do is selecting this view layer. I'm just going to shrink this down ever so slightly and I can actually move this up to the corner so that we can use our CryptoMat node here and just sort of do a pick from there. So can everybody see everything nice and clearly here? Oh, I might just sort of shut down this viewer node. So uh, now we can begin to add things. So let's add a few objects here. So we're gonna go add uh, this part, add this one, uh, this bit, this bit, and this bit. And so that's all of the objects in this building. We can add uh, the objects from this building here, and this building here, and this bit here. Now, how do we see what we uh, have generated? Well, then we have to connect the mat to our output. And now we get to see the mat that's generated from the selection that we've created. You have generated a custom mat without having to assign any ID to that object or that material. Uh, the crypto mat basically generates it at render time. This is extremely powerful. What's the advantage of this now? So we've got our render here and we've got a selection. So what if we wanted to use this mat, say, to color fill uh, these particular buildings for, for whatever reason? Well, let's go ahead and go shift A and color mix. We'll put this uh, between the color pass and uh, the output layer. And now we will connect the mat to our factor, okay? And so now all of a sudden you can see that these buildings here, this selection has been filled in with that white color. Uh, we can change the color so we can maybe fill that with blue, for instance, or you know any sort of color that we want. We can even change, uh, let, let's say we wanted an overlay effect here. We can now uh, uh, colorize these uh, buildings or let's say, for instance, we wanted to add a texture to this. So I happen to have one ready. Shift A, input, image. And I happen to have a halftone texture uh, right here. Okay. Now, of course, this will need to be adjusted before we can put it over this area. And uh, the, the way you have to treat the halftone texture or any sort of texture that needs to be tiled, Shift A, uh, I need a translate node set to both axes. So I'm going to throw that image through there. Let's just hide this one away. And then we need to throw this into the image output of a transform node. So that's translate, transform. We can give this a angle. We can give this a scale. And now when we plug this into the image, we should be able to see that half tone texture there, okay? So now why don't we scale this right down? Okay, now we've got this really nice manga style texturing over just those buildings there. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? 
So what if we wanted to generate uh, a map based on the materials? What does that look like? Okay, well, why don't we just quickly disconnect all of this and uh, let's reset our crypto map. So we'll go back to pick. But instead of objects to pick, first of all, I'm going to have to remove all these additions. So I'm just going to click on that and delete. And I'm going to connect my material crypto map. Now you can see that this is very familiar. Okay, we've got this, this, this green here, in, in my case, uh, represents all of the cement textures. This uh, red uh, represents the black. Uh, and these pink ones are obviously the, the window textures. And they're consistent across wherever these materials are found. This is another way of breaking it down. Now I said in my case, because when you generate a crypto map, the colors that you generate are picked at random. And so you might generate a crypto map and not have this particular color scheme. And it's not the color scheme that is important. What is important is that the colors can be easily picked out from other colors. So for example, we want to pick the material here for the uh, cement. And we want to pick the material uh, here for the lamps and the uh, glowing lamp there. Now, when we uh, generate a mat based on that, we get something like this. Now, what is something like this good for? Well, let's say we wanted to generate some line work. There's a very simple trick. We're just gonna bring in a couple of nodes here. First off, I need a dilate erode node, and I will need a mix node uh, set to subtract. And uh, also I will need a reroute node. That's just a little dot that sits on the line here. Oh, and then we need um, a set alpha map as well. Okay, so what do we got? We've got this dilate erode, okay? And I'm going to step this up to maybe a two. We've got the subtract node and we've got this set alpha node. How does this all interact? Well, if we put the dilate erode in our first image slot, and subtract the original mat from this, what do we get? We get these lines. Why? Because we have first dilated out the mat by two steps here, okay? And then we've subtracted the original mat from it to get this line work. Now, if we use that line work as the alpha on this set alpha here, now we can actually generate some black line work and we can control the thickness of that line work. And so then if we then overlay that over our colors for greater effect, why don't we disconnect this uh, freestyle pass? Let's just extend this out here. You can see that we have actually created some custom outlines. Okay, and that is really, really cool. Okay, uh, and so then you know, by combining certain mats, okay, you can then create these custom outlines. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to take some of that object data. Let's duplicate this. And let's bring in our object data over here. And let's pick some objects. Oh, we need an image, don't we? <laughs> image, object data. Okay. Uh, why don't we pick this building in the foreground here? And uh, the items from this particular building that require a little bit of... Okay, and uh, maybe... We'll pick uh, these street lamps as well. Okay, now we've got this mat over here. So we've got this nice little set of uh, nodes here, which we can actually turn into a small group that will be able to be duplicated. And then we can use the same thing on this crypto mat node over here. So why don't we go and group these ones together? Control uh, G, tab out, and we'll call this outlines. And just a quick edit here, I'm just gonna remove this image because we only need the input of the mask to go in here. So then when we duplicate this, we can add our mask. And if we then use the mask as the overlay on this image, you can now see how these lines 
are what are masked over the color pass. And if we were to say combine these lines together, I think we would need a alpha over node here to, to do that. What we can actually do is duplicate this outline so we've got a separate one and inside we can maybe make this line work a little bit thinner and now we can add a mix node here and overlay this line work over our image Let's just increase the thickness of this line work a little bit. Okay, now we can sort of see what's going on. Okay, and what we've got is this lovely sort of two-stage line work. I mean, it, it's sort of not entirely perfect, uh, but if we were to sort of zoom in here a little bit, you can see how the line work here is a little bit thinner than the outline line work. Uh, but we've got this nice little differentiation. And this has become a, a nice sort of custom line work. Now, with a little bit more uh, work, you could probably generate all sorts of mats and get your own custom line work to fit over that and not have to do anything with the freestyle layer at all. How cool is that? Now, the last one I'm going to show you is the crypto asset pass. This basically allows you to group objects together in hierarchies and use the uh, top parent of those hierarchies as the thing that creates the mat. And so if you'll remember, I'll just go back to my 3D viewport here and go into top view here. Uh, you'll remember that I've got this foreground parent, midground parent and background parent, okay? And each of these uh, have a bunch of these assets all parented to them. And what this causes the uh, cryptomat to do is to split things up into three colors, which is much more manageable than lots of little colors. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this cryptomat object uh, just have the foreground on it. I'm gonna hit N over here. And I'm going to call, and I'm going to label this foreground. Okay, so now the uh, the cryptomat node has got a label. I'm going to duplicate this twice, and I'm going to add that asset. Uh, oh, what should we do? Should we get a reroute going here? Yeah, why not? Let's go layer reroute here, and let's connect the image here and the image there to another reroute here and we can connect the mat here and the mat there okay and uh, now what we can do is we can call this one midground uh, don't forget to delete that and add the orange of the midground call this background okay and do the same here delete and add just the background. And so now this means that we've got three mats, foreground mat, a midground mat, and a background mat. And let's say we just had a simple uh, color, all right? And let's make that color something sort of like a, uh, a hazy sort of a blue, all right? And so now what we can do is we can take this image input, okay? And let's say we set this to overlay, all right? Let's just move these over a little bit. We could take this midground uh, mat as the factor, and we've got this really, really nice blue there, okay? And uh, let's say that we could duplicate this again. Uh, we can then bring this down a step and bring in our background as the factor, okay? Now this is the same blue, so what we can do is maybe make this one a little bit lighter. Um, and then, you know, of course our foreground needs to be a bit darker, and so what we might have to do is uh, duplicate this overlay, let's bring it up a step there, and let's have our foreground as the factor, and this color we're going to make 
a bit darker. Okay, let's go a little bit darker still. Okay, and now what we've got is this three stage, uh, darker, lighter, and lighter still, which sort of gives us this really nice kind of depth. And we've been able to do this by separating out those custom mats and then just doing an overlay on each of them. And so this is a really cool way of, uh, of creating some effects. So I hope you got a lot out of that video on using the Cryptomat to create comic style effects. As always, if you like what you see here uh, and you wanna see more in the future, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, you can join the ranks of my Patreon supporters. Uh, it's their support over on Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone, bye for now. Thank you.